Hey YouTubers, welcome to the legendary Yoda Spin Master review that just came out this last Friday. Excuse me if I keep the video camera low. I'm working on my Back to the Future Diner Room and it's not ready for the anvil yet, so I gotta keep the camera kind of low. So on most of my reviews that I've done in the past regarding Star Wars things, they've been out for years, so my reviews have been really short and they don't cover that much because probably thousands of other people have already done have done the reviews. On this particular one, however, this one's pretty new. So here he is, the Yoda, legendary Spin Master. He's holding his lightsaber. Now as far as height goes, I believe he's around 16 inches. And for reference, I got him next to the Hasbro Interactive R2-D2. So you can see they're about the same size. As far as the detailing goes on this guy, pretty darn good. He does look like Yoda, how, Yoda however, um, they didn't give him any hair. Uh, now he does have some hair that's painted on the back, but he doesn't actually have any hair, which then kind of makes him look pubescent, so to speak, and you can almost think maybe, well, this is maybe Yoda when he was like two years old or something because of his size. So I do think they missed the boat a little bit with the hair, not having it. However, at the same time, it probably saved on the retail cost. So I'm sure it'd be more if they were to actually put the real hair in there. But Other than that, his outfit's pretty good. I checked out his uh, lightsaber. It's fairly detailed. It is made out of plastic. And as you can tell, actually, his lightsaber that I got, uh, it's a little bit bent. Now, it's made out of a really hard plastic, which is actually good. That way it won't break. However, I'm probably going to have to heat it up with a hairdryer or something to see if I can bend it exactly straight. And then he also comes with this other accessory, which is this cane that fits into his arm. I mean, excuse me, his hand. Looks kind of more like plastic. I think I might black wash that. Scuff it up a little bit so it looks more like a real cane. But overall, I think Spin Master did a pretty good job. Now it does take uh, six C batteries, so make sure you get those at the store when you're picking this guy up, or if he's coming in the mail, make sure you buy it ahead of time. That way you can get him going right out of the box. Also, too, regarding getting him going right out of the box, I have seen other reviews or other YouTube videos where the Yoda doesn't seem like he's doing everything he should. So it looks like there were some defective ones out there. So you definitely want to run them through all of his paces, run them through all of his modes to make sure you got a good Yoda. So overall, I think he's great. We'll go ahead and turn him on. Now he is on the counter right now and I will show you and I'm going to talk about this a little bit later because I'm actually going to go on a rant. On a few things and I'll let you know I'm gonna do that that way you, if you don't want to hear me yell you can stop the video but let me see where it's at here it is right here show you closely well my camera's gonna focus in I might just have to read it to you do not use on a table do not use on a table okay so <clears throat> basically this is a floor model which is kind of odd because if you watch the previous videos from the trade shows and expos over the last four or five, six months, they always have them on a table. So don't quite understand that. But let's go ahead and turn them on. He has a little switch in the back. Also, too, when I got him out of the box, it took about a good like 10 minutes to get him out of the box. Now, of course, now I can't find his switch. Just back here. Here it is. Oh, get that one. Make sure I did. Now the voice the activation is really cool. He does move around. Hey Yoda. Teach me to use the force. The force. Yeah, I'm feeling it. 
Oh, here he comes. This is why you can't have him on a table. Ah! Here, hit R2. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go ahead and turn him off because you can watch all the different stuff he does on other videos. I will show you here on the bottom. His, um, looks like he has like a Lazy Susan type of uh, bottom here, but it is uh, on a motor. And it looks like there's two other little wheels here that go in the other direction. So what I'm going to try to do is uh, figure out a way to disable those. Uh, so I can actually have them on a table or a shelf. Which kind of brings me to the negative on this guy. And that is... You can't put them on a table or a shelf. So you really can't display them other than on the floor when you have them on. Which then makes me wonder why they didn't have a display mode. Now I actually called up uh, Spin Master today and asked them that question. And they couldn't answer that for me. Because uh, they should have had one. And if you don't know what a display mode is, and I don't know the correct terminology, maybe a safety mode or whatever, this R2 unit, which I'll turn him on, he's also interactive, he moves around. Hey R2. If you notice right here in front of R2, he has this little button right here. Now, when it's off, that means he can roam around. Yeah, you can roam around R2. And then when I push it back on, the motor is deactivated in his legs. That way you can have him on a shelf, still talk to him. He can still do a bunch of different stuff, but you can have him on and on a shelf. However, with Yoda here, it's one and done. You turn him on, you put him on the floor. If you're gonna be brave enough to put him on a tabletop, you better have a spotter, and you're definitely not gonna put him on a shelf. That's with being in the on position. So. They really did miss the boat on that. I don't see why nobody ever asked about that. I don't know why there was no articles that were written months earlier regarding the release of this toy. Nobody brought it up. No display mode. Floor mode and that's it. So there you go. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. I will get back to you on your questions. I can look up anything regarding uh, this little guy here. Is he worth the 179? I think he is. Just because who knows if they're going to make more of these. Uh, you know what? I got to turn R2 off because he always tries to steal the show. Now, for those of you who are tuning in for the first time, if you don't know, I actually have a big giant Star Wars wall, which R2 sits on, and he's really cool when you have him on. And that's where this Yoda is going. And I'm going to have to figure out a way to get him on a uh, display mode. I'm going to have to take him apart or do something. Here's a look at the uh, Star Wars wall. Some of its, some pieces are missing right now because I got some of the items obviously in the other room. Flip on the light really quickly. You can see some of the items in the... Uh, Yoda is actually going to go right where his saber is right now. In this middle section I'm going to put another shelf in. And he's going to go right there. So he'll look really cool in between the different uh, lightsabers that I have on the wall. That's my dog Casper. Say hello Casper. Hello Casper. So back to this guy here, 179 definitely, but they really did miss the mark by not having that display mode on there. But if I do figure out a way to display them, I definitely will put up another video on a how-to on how to disassemble the uh, wheel motors, wheel, wheel motors down below on this Yoda. So that's it for the review. Now stay tuned for the rest of the video where I start getting really upset regarding some of these new items that have come out and Force Friday and things that they missed and what the hell is Star Wars doing. So I'll give you a few seconds to go ahead and turn out the video if you want. If not, stay tuned for the rest of this video. All right, so here we go. Watch out, Yoda, I got your lightsaber. Just got you. Okay, so this is an FX lightsaber. Let's go ahead and set it there. It's one of the first items that I actually purchased for my Star Wars wall in there. I was kind of a newbie when it came to uh, Star Wars items. And I was looking for stuff to put on the wall and I saw some pictures on the internet 
of lifesavers and how they can be displayed. So go ahead and take a few. Uh, go ahead and take a look at some of the pictures. Pretty cool, right? I thought so. So that's what gave me the idea of going ahead and purchasing all the lightsabers because I wanted to have all the different colors and have it up on the wall. And then I also saw this video. Just go ahead and take a look at this. Now I'm not going to give the name or the channel of the video. I'll just show you the video. So go ahead and take a look at that real quick. Lights off. The lightsabers look really cool in a movie room. But one thing that isn't mentioned in that video, nothing mentioned about those pictures, nothing mentioned in the, I don't know, 20 different reviews that I watched regarding the FX lightsabers. Now remember too, when I watch these reviews, the lightsabers have been out for quite a while because I, again, just started building this wall last year. There wasn't one mention of the fact that the FX lightsabers don't stay on in display mode. They have like an auto turn off. So if they're not moving around, if they're stationary for more than, I'd say, depends on the different models. Because they have some where you can remove the uh, blade. Um, anywhere from 50 seconds up to about a minute and a half and then they turn off. So really, technically, you really can't have a room like those pictures or in that video. And I think that's pretty fucked up considering when that guy put that video out, he didn't say shit about the fact that the lightsabers don't stay on. In fact, if you paid attention to that video, what he did was is he filmed it for 10 seconds and then probably some of them started to turn off and then he stopped the video, got in another position, flipped them all back on again and so on and so on until he had the full video. But nowhere mentioned before he showed them, showed them or afterwards that he mentioned that they turn off. So again, why weren't they made with the display mode? I know they do make some lightsabers now that are made out of cheap plastic that you can use them for like night lights. But these actually FX ones, the really nice ones, the ones you're going to be paying anywhere between like $150 to over $200 for, you can display them just like this, which is fine, but you can't display them with the light on. And that would have been something nice to know. That's why I looked at the reviews. That's why I saw the pictures and saw the videos. And I bought the uh, wall the, the uh, wall displays for the lightsabers, put them all up, turned them all on. And I was like, nice, this looks great. And then a minute later, whoop, they all turned off. And I was like, what the hell? Oh, maybe there's a separate button. I put them all on again, same thing. And I'm like, you got to fucking be kidding me. 
Nobody ever brought it up. At least if they would have brought it up, I wouldn't have bought four of them. I just would have maybe bought Luke Skywalker's and Darth Vader's and left it at that. So, why don't they have a display mode? Same thing with this Yoda. And I already showed you once already on the, uh, on the little brochure that they give you. This brochure. Don't put them on a table. Hmm, funny, don't put them on a table. That kind of reminds me of something. What does that remind me of? Let me see. I'm ready to train, Master Yoda. Exactly. What all they do is have them on the table. Every single video I just showed you, they're on a table. That's from Spin Master. Spin Master knew it. And why did they have them on a table? You say, well, Scooby, yeah, you're not supposed to have them on a table, but they had to have them on a table during the expos so people could look at them. So they can look at the Yoda and see the detail of them. Well, that's exactly what I want. That's exactly what any collector should want. To be able to have it displayed where somebody can walk up to your wall or your shelf or where you have all your action figures and just see them there. And if you want to turn them on, they can just see the same stuff that they were trying to show at the expos. But again, they just said, ah, fuck it. We don't need a display mode. And it's funny, even in one of those videos where they were having a press conference, when they were showing all the stuff that Yoda was doing, the guy actually called over for a spotter. A spotter. He actually called a spotter over to the table so he could spot Yoda to make sure he didn't go flying off of it. So they knew about it. They knew it was an issue and they did nothing about it. Now, Spin Master isn't completely at, to blame because Star Wars or Lucasfilms or Disney, they had to sign off on this thing. It's their responsibility to look after the fans and the collectors of Star Wars and say, hey, look, we like the Yoda, looks good, put some hair on it. Or we like the Yoda, but you know what? We know a lot of our fans like to display items on shelves. Put a safety mode like the R2 has. They said nothing. They said, hey, it looks like Yoda, looks good. Okay, go ahead and make it. And that's what they did. So now these are two items. And mind you, like I said, I'm not a big collector. This is like a part-time thing for me. So really... The anger isn't that much because I'm going to be moving on from the Star Wars wall once it's finished and I'm going to go on to another project. But if you're a big Star Wars fan, you should have a voice. And you should say, hey, I want to have my lightsabers where they stay on on the wall. I want to be able to put my Yoda on a shelf and have them at least talk to people like they are too. And the last thing which just really pushed me over the edge was Force Friday... And I'm watching some of these videos. And this is why I know most of everything is uh, purchased for collecting and displaying. When I was watching all those videos, it was mostly all adults. They were there at the stores at midnight and buying all the items. And they're probably going to keep half of them in the boxes. They weren't doing early Christmas shopping. They were buying stuff for themselves. So anyway, so I was watching one of the videos. And I saw where they have a... I think it's a 48 inch, although I watched one video they said 52. So regardless, 48, 50 inch. They have a 48 inch Darth Vader and a 48 inch Stormtrooper from the New Force Awakens. And it's actually uh, motion activated, so when you walk past it, they make some noise and they talk to you. So my question is, why? Why do they have a 48 inch Darth Vader and Stormtrooper. What the fuck is that about? I understand the 3.75. That's the same size I played with back in the 70s when I saw the original Star Wars at a drive-in. I can understand the Black Series, the 6-inch ones. A little bit more detailed, have a little bit more articulation. 
And they are actually now starting to make vehicles, which is actually going to be awesome. I also understand the 12 inch because the 12 inch, that's a lot of your sideshow, uh, really heavy detailed figures, same size as like a Barbie doll. So I kind of understand those as well. And then they made some that are like, I don't know, what are they like, 30 inches? Those I kind of get a little bit only because I remember when I was a kid, I think I used to have these, to these toys, I think they were called like Shogun Warriors. And they were about like 30 something inches and they were kind of cool to play with as a kid. But the 48 inch? Who the fuck is that for? Dude, add the 20 more inches to it and make it life size. They're selling these things for $99. Are you telling me that nobody would buy a life size Darth Vader or a Stormtrooper? Fuck they would. That'd be the first thing sold out at the store. In fact, they probably wouldn't even have bought the Yoda. Probably everybody would have went right to those life size Darth Vaders and said, ah, I'll take it. Even if it had a price tag of double what the retail was on the 48, which is 99, so that'd be 200. Now, of course, they could say, well, you know, 72 inches, that's pretty big. Don't know if we could fit those through the doors at Toys R Us. That's why we don't make them. Okay, well, if that's the case, keep it at 48, but instead of making those, why don't you make me a 48 inch life size R2D2? What about that? He doesn't have to do a bunch of stuff, just have wheels on the bottom. He doesn't have to be electrical, have him the same motion sensor, have him go <whistles> something like that, maybe add one light to his dome, and just have it made all out of plastic. I'll pay 200 for it. Shit, I might even pay 300 for it. You know why? Because they don't fucking make them. Why don't they make them? They make uh, X-Wing fighter ice cube trays. Uh, Chewbacca earmuffs. Well, I don't know if they make those, but they make just about anything you can think of Star Wars, but they're going to stop at 48 inches. <laughs> they're going to stop at 48 inches, and they can't even give you a life-size R2-D2. Now, I know you can get a life-size R2-D2. You could have gotten one from Sideshow years ago and paid a couple grand for it, and if you want one now, pay up to like three or four grand. I think they even came out with a life-size R2-D2 that was like a home theater system where it actually could put a DVD in it and it projected uh, a screen onto the wall. I think that was close to life-size. So they can make that. But again, that's what, how much was that, like three grand? Or you can just build your own, which I've heard some people can build them for about a thousand or so, but then you got another couple hundred of hours of building time and you have to be good at doing stuff like that. So, yeah, 48 inches. They're going to make 48-inch Darth Vader, a 48-inch Stormtrooper, and they can't make a fucking life-size R2-D2? They wouldn't be more than that height to begin with? Or they can't just make the life-size Darth Vader just add 20 inches to it? <laughs> Man, I'm glad I'm getting out of this. I mean, I love Star Wars. I can't wait for Force Awakens. I have all the movies on Blu-ray, DVD, I play them on my 72-inch TV, and I'll watch them, and I'll watch them again and again, and I'm going to enjoy my Star Wars shelf till the day I die, but I am glad that I'm almost finished with it, because it's like, you guys don't have a voice. I, this really wasn't my fight. I didn't start doing this stuff until the beginning of this year. If I was the kind of person that stood in line three days to see the new movie and dressed up all the time and Star Wars stuff and had just shelves and shelves of figures and dioramas and all that stuff, I'd be a little bit pissed. I'd be pissed that this dude doesn't have a display mode. I'd be pissed that this thing turns off when you put it on display on a wall. I'd be pissed they still haven't made me a life-size R2-D2. Affordable one, that is. But they'll make a half-size R2-D2 out of a trash can or refrigerator, but they just won't make a life-size. They'll make a 48-inch. Anyways, there's my finished ranting. Um, sorry about the language. I'm actually a really happy guy. I'm always laughing all the time. And I am going to make this uh, Yoda work. And I'll be more than glad to share how I do it on a later video. So uh, go ahead and subscribe if you'd like. Again, leave comments down below. And, uh, yeah, there you go. Thanks. Have a good night.